Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers displaying firearms, professionalism, and identifications, and is brought to us by Fanta's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On May 31st, 2013, plainclothes officer Robert Dubway of the Bergen County Sheriff's Office stopped a minivan on the New Jersey Turnpike in Leonia, New Jersey. While he was conducting the stop, an unidentified trooper from the New Jersey State Police noticed the situation and also stopped his cruiser on the side of the road. The interaction that followed was recorded on the state trooper's dash cam. Blue dodge car. No! No! I want to see ID from you. From you. Right in there. Well, now, I'll do it if I want to. Out of Listen, I want to. Picture ID. You better have a good reason why you're whipping your, 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 your weapon on me. I do. We All right? Had, I do. You had what? Armed robbery. You had Police and person. I see what you got. I got a backup. No, you're not going to tell me to leave here. This is my spot right here. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. The state trooper draws his handgun and approaches Officer Dubois, later claiming he had unholstered his firearm because of a series of recent armed robbery carjackings where the suspects impersonated police officers. According to the New Jersey Attorney General's use of force policy for the year 2000, which appears to have been in place at the time of the incident, quote, a law enforcement officer shall not unholster or exhibit a firearm except under any of the following circumstances, for maintenance of the firearm, to secure the firearm, during training exercises, practice, or qualification with the firearm, when circumstances create a reasonable belief that it may be necessary for the officer to use the firearm, when circumstances create a reasonable belief that display of a firearm as an element of constructive authority helps establish or maintain control in a potentially dangerous situation in an effort to discourage resistance and ensure officer safety. As the policy also explains, quote, constructive authority does not involve actual physical contact with the subject, but involves the use of the law enforcement officer officer's authority to exert control over a subject. Examples include verbal commands, gestures, warnings, and unholstering a weapon. Pointing a firearm at a subject is an element of constructive authority to be used only in appropriate situations. The current version of the New Jersey Attorney General's use of force policy, which was published in April 2022, includes a very similar definition of constructive authority, but clarifies that, quote, constructive authority is not considered a use of force because it does not involve physical contact with the subject. The updated policy also includes revised rules for when an officer can display a firearm, stating that, quote, unholstering or pointing a firearm are tactics that should be used with great caution. The presence of an officer's firearm, under the right circumstances, can discourage resistance and ensure officer safety in potentially dangerous situations without the need to resort to force. At the same time, however, unnecessarily or prematurely drawing a firearm could limit an officer's options in controlling a situation, could create greater anxiety on the part of citizens, and may result in an unwarranted or accidental discharge of the firearm. The current policy also clarifies that, quote, officers may point a firearm at a person only when circumstances create a reasonable belief that it may be necessary for the officer to use deadly force. When the officer no longer reasonably believes that deadly force may be necessary, the officer shall, as soon as practicable, secure or holster the firearm. Due to the lower quality of the dash cam footage available, it is unclear whether the state trooper simply unholstered his weapon or pointed it at Officer Dubois. But, based on their conversation, it seems most likely that the trooper merely drew his firearm without pointing it. It is highly probable that a trooper unholstering his weapon when approaching the scene of a potential armed robbery would be found reasonable under both the prior and current versions of the use of force policy. And while it is less likely that pointing the firearm would be considered to be in line with the new policy, there is at least an argument to be made that the trooper had a reasonable belief that it could be necessary for him to use deadly force under the circumstances. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Now, now you don't. Apparently, you don't. I front. Why are you looking at me? I'm in front for a minute. Yeah, both. I 
work here. I want why you mother. Sergeant Gabriel Escobar arrives at the stop, and although it is difficult to determine who's saying what on the dash cam footage, all three officers appear to scream profanities at each other for an extended period of time. While neither the New Jersey State Police Department nor the Bergen County Sheriff's Office has made their professionalism policies publicly available, the State Police's mission statement notes that, quote, The New Jersey State Police is committed to protect, preserve, and safeguard the constitutional and civil rights of all citizens through impartial and courteous law enforcement with integrity and professionalism. We shall ensure public safety and provide quality service in partnership with our communities. Likewise, the Values section of the Bergen County Sheriff's Office's website states that, quote, The Bergen County Sheriff's Office commits to achieving our vision and mission by exhibiting professional and community leadership, and includes in the department's values both, quote, respect, treating all people with consideration, dignity, and fairness, and professionalism, dedicated to providing superior service through innovation collaboration, and partnerships. Similarly, Rule 4.10.1 of the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice Model Rules and Regulations requires that, quote, employees shall be courteous and orderly in their dealings with the public. They shall perform their duties politely, avoiding profane language, and shall always remain calm regardless of provocation. Although this rule is specifically aimed at dealings with the public rather than with other law enforcement agencies, and the actual policies of the departments involved are not publicly available, it seems a safe assumption that screaming profanities at an officer from another police agency would violate the tenets of professionalism required of both the state trooper and the county officers. You put your gun on me! You come back! You If you didn't have the uniform on, I f***ing wipe the street with you, bro! You put your gun on me! You f***ing police come back! What the f*** do I look like you? A rash of three of them in the last month! Three of them in unmarked cars. Arrest the police impersonator. So don't come out here rocking a fucking uniform. You better than anybody. You know who I am. Really? You know who I am. Say? I don't know. Arrest the police impersonator. That's best, bro. Did I see that one? You just walked up. But you saw it afterwards. Come back. What? Did I have my gun out after I saw that? Did I throw you out? Arrest the police impersonator. That's right. It's a fucking move. It's a rookie move. You know who I am. The state trooper claims that he demanded Officer Dubois' identification because of the recent string of robberies involving police impersonators. In general, there is no obligation under New Jersey law for an individual to identify themselves to the police, even if the officer has reasonable suspicion to detain them. New Jersey does not have a stop and identify law, and courts have determined that the state's obstruction statute, which is codified in Section 2C29-1 of the New Jersey Code, does not criminalize an individual's refusal to identify themselves. The statute states that, quote, a person commits an offense if he purposely obstructs, impairs, or perverts the administration of law or other governmental function, or prevents or attempts to prevent a public servant from lawfully performing an official function by means of flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. When deciding cases involving this statute, New Jersey courts have consistently determined that individuals cannot be convicted of obstruction unless they take one of the specifically listed physical actions or they engage in a, quote, independently unlawful act. The Superior Court of the New Jersey Appellate Division held in the 2020 case of Bryant versus Camden County Police Department that an individual could not be convicted under this statute 
statute for refusing to show identification to a police officer, explaining that because the interaction was not initiated on the belief that the suspect had violated a traffic law, he had the right to refuse to turn over his identification. The court explained that, quote, We do not envision a prudent person would believe there was a reasonable basis to arrest Bryant for obstruction for merely not turning over his identification. Bryant committed no unlawful act to impede the investigation. To rule otherwise gives law enforcement without a reasonable basis the right to demand that a person provide identification and charge that person under the obstruction statute for not complying. Of course, the situation at hand is much more complicated than an officer stopping a civilian on the street, as this interaction occurred between two officers after one officer had conducted a traffic stop on a citizen, and there's no case law that discusses this unique scenario. However, it is unlikely that a court would conclude that Officer Dubois was legally obligated to identify himself, given the lack of a stop and identify law in New Jersey, and the fact that officers typically do not have a legal duty to disclose their identities. That being said, it is certainly possible that a court could conclude that, under the circumstances, the state trooper would have probable cause to arrest Officer Dubois for an offense related to the impersonation of a police officer or carjacking if he refused to provide any evidence that he was actually a police officer, given the fact that he was in plain clothes. <laughs> You don't know the story. You I just told you the story, and you're what? still acting like. What, what does that mean? I just told you the story. So when you're playing cold guys, do that. Do we do that to them? Well, listen. When I'm playing guys that are out here working, they let us know. I don't come out to this uh, uh, But you're not from here. You don't know about here. Okay. Where you from? The That's mall right. That's right, because I only got six months on the job. Because it's an issue now. Now it's an issue. Now it's an issue. First of all, I'm not going to make an issue of it. I work out here. I'm not going to make an issue of it. Oh, you're not making an issue out here? You can come here ranting and raving telling me to get the f*** out of here? You didn't just do that? I didn't just settle this out here. I'm not going to say nothing. Do you want to pull your board off? I'm telling you what you guys are I tried to explain it to you. We've had three police impersonators. That's best and all. We're ripping and stripping out here. Robbing people. You know what? Carjacking, guns, the whole nine yards. But if you don't believe it, I want my detectives to call you. I, I want them to personally call you because I'm a rookie and you don't, listen, I don't know listen, what the listen, going on. Just calm down. Now, calm down. Because we're not getting anywhere yelling at each other, all right? <laughs> if that's the case, then you know what? I know I'm lying, bro. I'm lying. I come out here typically and put my gun out on police because that's what I do. That's what they teach us. Oh, this one out of the academy to do. I want them to call you personally because you know what? Apparently my word's not good enough. So I'm gonna leave it as is. After the incident, State Police Superintendent Colonel Rick Fuentes issued a statement giving his full support to the trooper involved, claiming his actions were, quote, fully justified, given the recent carjackings involving police impersonators. The statement made no mention of Colonel Fuentes' opinion on the trooper's professionalism during the encounter, and it does not appear that any disciplinary action was taken against the trooper for his behavior. Bergen County Police Chief Brian Higgins stated that his department had reviewed the incident and determined that neither the county officers nor the state trooper was at fault. However, Bergen County Executive Kathleen Donovan's Chief of Staff, Jean Barada, reported that Sergeant Escobar and Officer Dubois did receive some sort of punishment for their actions. She did not release any further details regarding the type of punishment, citing restrictions in the Attorney General's guidelines on internal affairs investigations. Overall, the state trooper gets a C for maintaining an overly aggressive and disrespectful demeanor throughout the encounter, screaming at the Bergen County officers, and repeatedly using profanity and other discourteous language towards his fellow officers. While I understand why the trooper wanted to ensure that Officer Dubois was a legitimate police officer and felt the need to draw his weapon while approaching the scene of a potential carjacking, the trooper's conduct was unnecessarily confrontational from the get-go, and his behavior after he had confirmed Officer Dubois' identity was even worse. 
Tempers were clearly running high on both sides of this confrontation, but the Bergen County officer's conduct does not excuse the state trooper for his extreme breach of professionalism during this interaction. As the New Jersey Division of Criminal Justice Model Rules and Regulations state, officers should, quote, always remain calm regardless of provocation. And this standard should still apply when the source of the provocation is another officer. The Bergen County officers get a C- minus for needlessly escalating the situation instead of simply confirming their status as police officers, engaging in over-assertive and disrespectful behavior throughout the interaction, and screaming at the state trooper for an extended period of time. Although it is understandable that Officer Dubois was offended by the state trooper's demands, particularly given the trooper's aggressive demeanor and the fact that he unholstered his firearm, the reality is that he was conducting a traffic stop in plain clothes in an unmarked vehicle, and a reasonable officer should be able to understand the trooper's need to confirm his identity. While traffic stops in unmarked vehicles are sometimes legal in New Jersey, this interaction demonstrates the confusion and fear that these practices can cause, and the lack of professionalism exhibited by all of the officers involved in this situation should not be considered acceptable under any circumstances. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.